Right. So um, this might be something useful for many kind of data pipeline situations uh, and such. Uh, so I was working with a system integration script that is running um, based on some events of a system. And let's let's look at the actual thing. I'm going to select the screen from here. So going back a little bit, I think, to the previous presentation I was giving, which was uh, talking about some 3D uh, modeling and 3D printing stuff. So there is basically a integration on a 3D printing system, which pushes the basically the 3D part information to the website. So it kind of keeps this hackerspace website up to date and lively because there's some automatic content here. This is sort of a pro, uh, my playground website where I kind of took apart the whole WordPress blah blah Vusivic builders and this is kind of built like a Django web application with HTMX and all cool stuff. So you can check it out if you're interested in that kind of things. So there's like, a, yeah, some documentation about that here and links. But yeah, to co go to the topic of today, um, how the system works, there is the 3D printer uh, running at the hackerspace. And when people go to the machine and instruct the printer to print something, uh, there will be an um, octoprint systems event which will be run. And this is the first version of the script I made. So, yeah, it's a bash script. And what it does basically is to do three HTTP requests to the WordPress API and it will upload a new file create a new 3D print post for that. And those are then uh, connected together in the third part. So that is how, how you can upload a thing into the WordPress and make a file for it. So, okay, this was like fine and it worked for many weeks until a friend noticed that it's like uh, exploitable uh, by choosing a certain type of uh, file name for the 3D print. So what I thought was to move and write it with uh, some proper programming tool because it's a bit too much for me to understand the bash syntax for uh, something like that. So basically I started rewriting the thing with Babashka and yeah, it's very nice tool. Um, Kind of similar like many Python tools, I think, that you can make a nice command line interface, just like the same three different uh, requests made to the server. And yeah, so th this is what I already got working. But then I realized that this thing is running behind firewalls and I don't have access to the computer. There's a friend who is maintaining the 3D printing system, and uh, I cannot get the information when it fails. So, yeah, so I, I'm running like 10 to 20 WordPress sites, and lately I set up this observability tool. It's also other name for this is Sentry. It's like a Python Django uh, system, and the glitch tip is a free open source version of the Sentry. It was forked like. 2019 or something and uh, yeah basically uh, this is what I've been playing with for last few weeks so I have this system set up running using this kind of a new trendy or well it's like a helper tool to do infrastructure stuff so I have a Coolify um, infra management panel installed to some VPS and this is like my company's different kind of services which are running there. 
And I installed a glitch tip using basically a preset on this Coolify system. And it's very like easy process. And I'm kind of interested and I like to show this to everyone because this is something that I realized it helps me so much now that I set this up the first time because I had this running for three or four weeks and I all have almost 100 different error types from all the different servers and systems that I have running. And with this, I'm kind of, yeah, gaining back control and understanding of all that. So I can sort of scale my setup. So yeah, this is the intra panel and setup. And basically the glitch tip can be run quite easily using like a Docker Compose. And this Coolify is basically just giving you a preset to launch this. And it has a whole bunch of different presets. So like I have my next cloud and uh, Odoo and some different kind of things which I've been playing with the uh, com company infrasystems and stuff like that. Because I like to run my own own infrasystems and not use all the SaaS offerings. So uh, then how I had a pro I, I wanted to connect this script when it fails to the glitch tip, this observability platform. But the problem with that was that the Java SDK for Sentry cannot be imported to Babashka because it, re it is depending on certain Java libraries, which are not compiled into the Babashka by default. So then, um, yeah, basically I figured out that there is the HTTP API for the glitch tip and wrote my own sort of a connector to that. So th this is like a closure Babashka focused small library for basically sending the exception data to the glitch tip platform or Sentry. And yeah, I just just finished this and published this today. I've been working on it for this during this week. And uh, yeah, then this is sort of my view to the system at this point. So if I refresh the page, you can see that the previous error is 33 minutes old. And now if we take the command line here and run this, I know that this will fail. I have like a wrong URL. This is my company site which doesn't have anything to do with this 3D prints and the account credentials are all wrong. So it will fail. This is the normal request that the Octoprint printing system would automatically call this with the parameter for the G code and the domain. And it will underneath run the logic here from the main. There is this kind of an error handling as I run the upload command. It is inside a try block and then I catch the error. And then this error will be sent to the glitch tip. And I just finished this redaction thing here so I can show it to you. So there is some uh, HTTP header information on these um, exceptions, which contains like the API access keys and stuff. So this will be redacted. And now when I run this, it will here print on the console or also something about the error. And if I refresh the panel here, it shows that, okay, here's, Right now, there's like a new entry to this exact error. So here we have the exception information. And yeah, basically here I can see the stack trace with the information of the request and 
the source locations and this sort of information right away from the error. I'm improving it next so that this cause which contains a HTTP request would be put into the proper section here. There's like this glitch tip and sentry. They have like a HTTP request section down here. So I will continue on sort of uh, shoveling this stuff more nicely to the view from, from there. And yeah, this is pretty much what I've been working on. Um, you should try these kind of uh, tools if you haven't yet. And uh, yeah, maybe this can help also a little bit on how to integrate it if you like to use Babashka. And yeah, basically there is the Babashka dependency which will be imported on your script and then you can require it like that and so on. So this is quite nice nice way how the uh, Babashka can sort of uh, pull these dependencies uh, and you can just have this one file and it is almost as kind of as simple as the bash script if you think about the dependencies how they are sort of packaged together so it's a really nice 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 uh, tool for this kind of a thing and yeah i'm tomorrow i think we'll try to put this to run in the production in place of that shell script and yeah, we'll see how, how that goes then. So I, I think I'll, I'll update these code examples as I find bugs on them. But yeah, do you have any questions? Um, yeah, is this something that you would be interested possibly to use in your work? Or are you maybe already familiar with this kind of things? Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Jarko. And maybe uh, if you wish to share any of the links to those tools which are new to some of us, it will be great to share in the chat. And yeah, sorry, yeah, maybe somebody has a question about anything. So inspiring to see you using all the flavors of closure. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, I want to tell you, I, I had the presentation last time with Basilisp and Fell. And I kind of felt a little bit sidetracked at that time. And I spent some time without writing much closure at all. And now I picked up uh, Babashka and it actually feels much nicer than those more experimental dialects. This has sort of the, yeah, Babashka feels like it has a little bit of a rough edge. You cannot like have the source um, locations that you can jump in in the so Emacs editor, for example. So it feels a little bit like closure maybe 10 years ago in the comfortability or something like that. But it is really tactile and nice. Like it, yeah, it's just a little bit more rough edges than the JVM, but it, it is the same thing. You don't have to like do all the weird uh, gymnastics in your head as with those different dialects that are not Java at all. So this specific project already uses Basilisp. Is that right? Oh, no, no, it is. An oh, yeah, it is. It is related in the sense because, uh, yes, I'm tr um, planning to upgrade it or I kind of halfway did it already, but there was the problem that as I have these G code files, um, I, I'm building this script which will um, take the G code um, coordinates from the file and create a 3D object from that using Blender. So uh, I was using Basilisp for scripting Blender. And uh, yeah, I think I'll proceed towards that. Um, yeah, it's a nice hobby hobby project for me, and I I also try to kind of uh, just level up my skills while doing this, and hope that at some point I can do uh, this for some real real uh, client systems and stuff like that. So yeah.
Yeah. Any questions, anybody to Darko? I, I have a question. Um, I am a little bit curious about the actual initial exploit that your colleague had pointed out. Do you think you could just talk a little bit about what that was? Okay, yeah, we can we can look on the screen. So basically, so yeah, it, it is like a sanitization problem for what I, I cannot like read and point it right away, but basically the a file name wasn't sanitized in any way, which could take control of this bash, I think, or inject data into the API request. That was how the explanation was. So like I, when I work with the regular programming languages, um, th those have the facilities for doing proper validation and everything. and. I just don't want to think about that kind of problems with bash because it's a very different kind of a, it's all string processing type of a problem. So, yeah. It's cool to see um, the bash you use and all the other technologies you're using. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Is it okay to ask about you, your comparison of Basilisk, which is Closure, a closure like language on top of Python and Babashka. So you said earlier that Babashka seems more familiar and closure like in terms of, you know, being re more related to Java, uh, even though it is not running on top of the JVM, it is compiled from a JVM source, basically. Right? And yeah. And Basilisk is different, but the overall experience what tool you would pick in different situations yeah i have been thinking about this problem a lot a lot and also with the php dialect the fell because i work with all these wordpress sites and i've been looking on different methods to use those in conjunction with the frameworks also with basilisk how to work with django for example and so on but there's like, it gets uh, quite hairy in a sense when you are starting to build those kind of things from scratch, because in the first place, you kind of lose the platform debugging ability a bit. You have to do this kind of source mapping thing in your head and do these prints and you kind of uh, don't e necessarily even have the proper closure IDE especially with the fail. Basilisp has some like a REPL support, but with, both, with those both, the REPL is, it, it is quite clunky and the error messages are quite clunky. So definitely it's not very ergonomic like with the JVM and Babashka also uh, using Java, even though it doesn't like navigate into the external files nicely like with the JVM, it seems to work out of the box. But yeah, that kind of a thing, things there there are. So yeah, I kind of want to, want I, I, or maybe I already have that kind of a security in my mind though that I could live with WordPress and I could be able to do it all from Lisp at some point. So that kind of a thing, thing is sort of a, nice nice feeling i got from those experiments but for now i i sort of just especially with the php i just do that do that with the php use the debugger there's so much foreign code i need to read and all that so it, it is kind of a but maybe if there was like some kind of a product some very like a narrow kind of a thing where yeah for something like that it could be uh, used and if if there was like a product that maybe has a closure back end and then maybe a integration on the WordPress side, maybe then it would make sense to use something like Pell or the same with the Python. Um, if you kind of build your little Lisp section in that context of the bigger framework, it's a bit same. Like I, I hear that 
some yeah how in the JVM ecosystem the closure is sort of brought into the context of our Java Java system with as jar files and this sort of like plug and play. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I wish to ask another thing, but maybe other people have questions. So maybe I'll just say that in this group, which is mostly about uh, data analysis and so on, we will have some interest in Basilisk, this language of, on top of Python. And, and I think you, uh, Yarko, you inspired us to look into that. And in one of the current projects, one of our friends uh, is doing a PhD in linguistics and has some natural language processing tasks. And I think in that situation, we are expecting that something like Basilisk will be the easiest choice because it is impossible to ignore Python and all those many Python libraries. And even though we could use all of them for closure, it will probably be with less friction if we use them first from Basilisk. And I'm saying yeah. that not much experience, yeah. Yeah, there's some other uh, interesting angle lately. I've been lo looking into this Wasm runtime and well uh, what is that basically, what was some so it, it's the web assembly runtime so that is also interesting i kind of how how i ended, ended up thinking about that i don't even remember but some interesting python ecosystem things that are ported to wasm for example are like pi game and pixels this those are game game engines and there is already discussion in the Basilisp uh, Slack channel that there there are, have been some experiments using like these pixels uh, from Basilisp and even compiling it to Wasm. It's very very inspiring. And then there's the other other interesting thing with the, like with these game engines. Pygame, for example, can have used the SDL2 library, which is a C++ library. So then if there's the Jank dialect, there would be kind of an interesting segue if you started to build apps with the Basilisp and SDL2-based framework, which you maybe could continue at some point with the Jank compiling directly to the C++. So this kind of, uh, yeah, very, very, I don't understand even third of what they are talking in the Jank channel at this point. It is so low level and hardcore, but it is kind of, uh, these kind of things are really interesting to, yeah, think about how it could be at some point. <laughs> 